Well, I was raised, uh, I guess, five doors down from a Catholic church. And it was a church that had a great big grass area just like this. And so I spent a lot of time there with my action man, my G.I. Joe, building traps and doing such. But no one ever stopped me and shared the gospel of Jesus. So for the 12, 15 years I might have spent in that church, I never heard the gospel. And so I had this idea that the church was a place that people visited. It wasn't a place where the living God resided. And it was sometime later, probably around the age of 12, 13, when I fell in love with, you know, useless wooden toy, so to speak, my skateboard, and that led me to go to America. I'd been in love with soccer, football. I'd been in love with martial arts, but I truly fell in love with skating. It was the desire of my heart. I uh, took off to America when I was 13 for my 13th birthday to visit my sisters, got one of my first skateboards, and then probably within the course of about two years, I'd been back to Liverpool, I'd been skating, I'd been jumping down stairs and handrails and doing all these tricks that no one was doing yet. Because of the age I was, I was just pursuing all these tricks. And within about two years, I was sponsored by one of the big companies that was from England that had moved across to America. Um, and before you know it, I mean, I'm winning contests, I'm in the magazines, and now I'm seeing, wait a minute, I liked soccer and I liked martial arts, but this has become everything that I am. It was defining me and I'm, you know, I'm growing in this, it's helping my mind, it's something that's so individual. I'm gonna get to go to America and skate, and maybe one day be professional, with the purpose of just getting free skateboards and free stickers, and you know, who knows what, coming here to beautiful California. So by the age of about 15 to about 16, 17, 18, moved over to America, Huntington Beach. I'd finished about six months of art school in England and then just took up and left. And I'd been living with a good friend of mine, Jeff Rowley, also an English guy. I was going around the world touring in front of like, you know, thousand to six, seven thousand people every time you skate, riding for Tony Hawk in all the magazines and all the videos with your names on this, with your names on that. I mean, in a nutshell, my life was all about me. My life was about Brian Sumner and not in this egotistical way, but it was all I'd known. You know, I wasn't about the money. I wasn't about myself, but I was enjoying this toy of mine. I was getting to be in the sunshine. I was living somewhere where there was no parents, there was no responsibility. Checks were coming in, turned professional at about the age of 18. And so then I began making all this money. I mean, pro shoe, you know, tech decks and shoe, just pants, all this stuff. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but I still hadn't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. About the age of 19, I fell in love all over again. And this time with my wife-to-be, I also met her through Jeff Rowley, my wife Tracy. We had no idea about the Lord. She was raised with some kind of Catholic background, like me. You go on Easter, you go on Christmas. And pretty quick, I realized that we had no clue about life. We loved each other in the way that she's pretty, or she's attractive, or she's nice, or she makes me feel, or she makes me want to do this, or want to do that. And um, it was really selfish kind of love. I was about to go back to England. We knew we were in love. And I said, you know what? Let's just get married, joking, but being sincere. And she says, yeah, why not? I'll drive us to Vegas tonight. And so we go down to the beach. I propose, take off to Vegas in a little Honda Accord. I can't even drive yet. I'm such a kid, I didn't learn to drive. We get to Vegas, show up to the wedding chapel, go in. The pastor reads uh, 1 Corinthians 13, four to eight. I have no idea this is the Bible, but I say, what an amazing speech. I'm weeping, I'm crying. The very same night we say, you know, let's have a kid because think about it. My name's on a skateboard. I've moved to America. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've got this beautiful wife. Why would I just have a kid? Because there's no such thing as responsibility. Uh, she's pregnant nine, nine to 10 months later. Responsibility has become really alive in us. I'm not skating as much. We're beginning to fight. We're getting jealous of each other. When I'm on tour, there's all kinds of issues and just all the things the world was throwing at me that I could have dealt with earlier because it was all about me. I was seeing this struggle now. And then within probably about the next year to two years of just me trying to figure out who I was, our jealousy issues, me going on tour, skating and things with money and having no clue, it got to a place where we'd fought so much. I grew up in England fighting. I mean, you're punching things, you're punching people, you're aggressive. A lot of my expression was very aggressive, punching holes in this or that. She was equally the same way. We got to where we fought so much I remember just one day saying, you know what, F this. I just spoke that out loud, this is it. I'm no longer gonna be the good husband. I'm not gonna just compromise my life for this person. And I began to just rebel, I began to fight like crazy. I got a bunch of skate tickets, so you know, trespassing or, you don't really get a skate ticket, you get a trespassing ticket or you get an, uh, 
I guess you can get in a lot of trouble for skating nowadays, so I got a bunch of tickets. I had community service. I'm not a citizen. We're fighting like crazy. I got in a couple of fist fights. So there's a guy. His dreams come true. It's all about me. I'm still going around the world. I'm still making all this money. I have no clue about God. I've never heard about Jesus Christ. I'm fighting with this person. I might get deported because I'm getting more and more things on my record. And I just cry out and say, you know what? We're getting divorced. I'm over my life. God, if you don't show up, I'm going to kill myself. There's a guy with everything, American dream. Yeah, we ended up getting divorced. We tried to make it work. We couldn't do it. I moved out of living with her and her parents. And I ended up going to community service at a Christian thrift store somewhere over here in Tustin. I show up thinking, okay, all these cool plaid shirts. I like that. I'm still going around the world. I'm still getting all this money in the Christian thrift store. I see all these Christians who tell me things like this. You know, uh, I don't really know if this is all real, but at least we're living a good life. And I'm thinking, you're reading a book that has no pictures. You're, you're serving at a church and you're tithing your money. This isn't a good life. I'm better off living in the world. While at the same time, I'm meeting people that have true joy and true peace that would out of their day when they would see me in this Christian thrift store folding old men's pants or passing out food to the people that were there. They would come and want to pray with me. And they had this joy about them, this true walk in the Lord that pointed to Jesus Christ, that there's a guy with everything supposedly, didn't have this kind of joy, didn't have this kind of peace. And upon speaking with these people, I began to see the light and I began to read the Word of God. I began to study other faiths, what the Mormons believe, what the Buddhists believe, what the Rastafari's believe. This is all taking place. This is all going on. I'm wanting to see my son. I'm fighting with my ex-wife. I'm still contemplating suicide. And it got to a place where I'd read through the Bible and I'd realized who Jesus Christ claimed he was. I'd read The Origin of Species. I began to study DNA and evolution. I'd questioned all the great minds. I'd, you know, filled up on the history books and I looked at all the DNA and the universe and I realized real quick, wait a minute, Buddha was a deadbeat that left his family and went and meditated. I realized that Rastafari's take the, take the word yeah and change it to ja and in some ways change it as the Bible's passed down the Nile. But I realized within the word of God that Genesis tells me that I was created in God's image. I realized that Jesus Christ claimed that I've sinned against heaven and that I need to be forgiven. But at the same time, I hadn't met him.